Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It is Friday, bank holiday over here in the UK. So if you're having a day off today with the family, I hope you're all having a very good day, whatever it is that you are up to and you're trying to take your mind off what is coming on Sunday, just two days away now. Mikel Arteta will be speaking today. Pep Guardiola will be speaking today. Both managers having their press conference ahead of that huge, huge game at the Etihad on Sunday. Mikel will be speaking about 1.30pm. That's when he's due to start at London Colney today. I would say looking forward to getting the very latest team news, which of course is going to be big, big news building up to Sunday's game. Who's going to play, be playing? More importantly, who isn't going to be playing on both sides? But I think we know what we're going to get from Mikel Arteta, don't we? The old. Uh, we've still got a couple of sessions to go. We'll see how they are. Hopefully, some players will be back. That sort of thing. The generic Mikel Arteta responses to team news. I doubt we'll get any more than that. Maybe we'll get a little bit more from Manchester City, but we shall wait and see. So we'll talk about that game, of course, in today's show. Got some comments from you guys as well to go over. But I wanted to start today's show on the big news that broke yesterday: that Ethan Wanieri's new contract, first professional contract with the club has been signed. Now, we knew it was coming. I'd reported on it uh, earlier on in a week, in fact, that uh, it was it was just a kind of matter of when the announcement came. Everyone knew it was happening. It had been agreed for a long, long time. But still, to actually see the pictures, if you see it on YouTube here, you can see it. Per, per Mata Saka, Ethan Onyeri, like a very happy signing that contract. For Arsenal, it's great news. You know, this is a player they really, really believe in. They really think he can go on and make, make a big impact at the club. You know, it's a long way for t to go till we get to that point. Of course, he's still just 17, but Arsenal really wanted to keep him and they had to really fight to keep him as well because there was strong interest from um, Manchester City, from Chelsea, who were doing all they can, believe me, to try and get Yves Manieri to, uh, to sign for them and not for Arsenal. So Arsenal delighted, as you can understand. We'll go through what everyone's had to say about it now. Per Mertesack says, we are extremely proud of Ethan, Ethan and his journey from pre-academy to Halen, then a seamless transition to Sober Realty Training Centre, and then making his first team debut. Ethan's journey now continues, and we'll all be there alongside him to support his development. Ethan has a strong ability to master the ball, dominate possession, and is really effective in the final third, which fits into our playing style at Arsenal. He is someone that will thrive on and off the pitch as a strong young gunner. And we look forward to working with him during his ongoing ongoing development in the years to come. That strong young gunner, which you see is capped up there uh, by Arsenal. That is uh, Per Mertesacker's kind of catchphrase. And uh, when he sits down with all the players at, and the coaching staff at Hale End and the academy, strong young gunner is what he wants to build all those players into. Not just to go on and be successes for Arsenal, but just to be very strong, young-minded young people who, if they have to leave, they can go on and they're still being very well educated to go on and be a success elsewhere, whether that be in football or not in football. So Per, understandably, very happy. I mean, this is the kind of, Ethan really at the moment is a jewel of the Hale End crowd, um, of the Hale End um, crown, sorry, crowd. Uh, there's been obviously lots of young players who have gone through and made it in the first team in recent years at Arsenal, but that has kind of dried up since the Smith Rowe, Nelson, Saka sort of era. Uh, and now we're kind of waiting for the next ones to come through. And Ethan is certainly sort of the jewel in the crown in that young crop, along with Miles Lewis, Skelly. And um, so, yeah, it's great news for him. You can understand why Murta Saka is happy. Mikel Arteta, very happy as well. He played a big part in this in getting Wanieri to stay. As I said, when I, like at the end of last season, there was a lot of fear at Arsenal that he was going to go. Um, and not just at Arsenal, within football foot circles, people thought he was gone. That it had been done in he kind of his head had been turned and he was going to go somewhere else. And I understand Mikel Arteta played a very, very active role in making sure that his head sort of turned back towards Arsenal and that was the way he was thinking. So not surprising to see Arteta very happy in that picture there. Ethan there commenting on it says, I'm delighted to have finally got to this stage after all the hard work over so many years. It's a proud moment for me and my family to finally be here. So I'm happy and ready to keep working. It was a dream to get to this stage. I've always thought about it when this day would come and I've been looking forward to it. So I'm so happy it's finally here. I didn't have to think about it. Not sure that was true. Uh, this is my family and it feels like home here. Everyone's like a family together. And they care about everyone. It feels so special to me. All the people around me have helped me get better as a person and definitely helped me develop as a player on the pitch. The opportunities from Mikel, all the under-21s coaches and the under-18s coaches, they've all helped me develop. So I'm so grateful to them and he's understandable that he's very very happy when he says he didn't have to think about it as i said i think 
I think there was certainly having to think about it because there was a lot of other clubs banging on his and his people's doors trying to convince them to move to Arsenal. But ultimately, he's signed, he's stayed, and he's continuing this journey. You know, he was a very tiny little kid when he first signed for Arsenal. He's still a little kid now. He's 17, which is unbelievable, given uh, the sort of stature he plays with when we've seen him on the pitch for the first team. Um but the big challenge now waits for East Manieri, basically. And he talks about it here. Um, sorry, I've gone to the wrong slide there. He talks about it here on his aims. He says, I want to keep pushing towards the first team, gain as much experience as I can from the players in the first team, score as many goals as I can in whatever game I'm playing and just keep pushing. I'm just going to keep working and do my best when I get the opportunities given. Now, this is the big challenge for Ethan now. Yeah, it's all well and good. You get to your 17th birthday, you sign your first professional contract. We've seen lots of players do that. But then taking the next step, forcing your way into this Arsenal first team, that is going to be a real, real challenge for, Mikel, for uh, Ethan Manier. We've seen it, the level Arsenal now operate at, the honours that they're going for, the aims that they have, the ambitions they have. It's top level, you know, it's Premier League, it's Champions League. So for a 17-year-old kid to push their way into the first team, that's going to be really, really hard. We saw Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe do it, um, you know, Eddie, Reese uh, as well. But the sort of opportunities they got and that they took, certainly with... Emil and Saka when they forced their way into the team was when Arsenal were kind of at rock bottom. You know, they were a mess. They they needed someone to come in and kind of rescue them. And you could turn to youth in that stage because there was nothing to lose. You could throw in youth at that stage and it didn't really matter. But right now, when the stakes are so high, when one drop point is so crucial, or two drop points is so crucial, um, that it's very hard to turn to youngsters and to give them the opportunities that they need. And so it's going to be a real challenge for Ethan to do it. I'm, I'm really interested to see how he gets on because everyone I've spoke to at Arsenal really believe in him and think that he could be, you know, he can go places. He can make that step into the first team. But the step that he's made now is a big step. The next step he has to make to get into the first team and make himself a kind of regular is just so far bigger than the one he's already taken. It's unbelievable. And this is the biggest challenge he now faces. And it's going to be really interesting to see how he deals with it. And it'll be interesting how Arsenal deal with it as well. We spoke about it earlier on in the show when we spoke about Ethan uh, later, earlier on in the week, when when you sort of plan who you're going to sign and new signings, you talk about where Arsenal are looking to sign players at the moment, you know, potentially another winger, another attacker, those sort of things. Um, and then you wonder, well, you've got to sort of leave a pathway at times for these young players to sort of make their way through. And so it'll be interesting, not just how Ethan handles this next step, but how Arsenal handle that next step. Will they plan their transfer windows, the next couple of transfer windows in terms of who they're going to sign around the lights in Ethan area. So well, there's no point signing him because Ethan's coming through and we want him to try and play in that position. So let's not sign this player. Let's just leave that spot open in the squad for Ethan really to give it up, get an opportunity and try and make it his own. Um, and I hope Arsenal do that. You know, I know a lot of people say, oh, Mikel Arteta, doesn't give you for chance. I don't believe it for a second because he's built like the youngest squad in the league around and having success with youth. So he trusts young players. He will give young players a chance. He just needs to trust them and feel that they're good enough. And clearly, there's been some young players who have been in and around you know, the first team picture that he just doesn't really trust too much. He doesn't believe that they're, they're good enough. I think that's plainly obvious. But Ethan, he does. He's given him a couple of opportunities already. He plays all the time with the first team. So I do think Arteta trusts Ethan. That's why he works so hard to keep him. But... You also need to give him the chance. So it's going to be really interesting to see how he how he gets on. But um, it's fantastic news. Honestly, it's really great news. I'm delighted that it's done and that it's signed and he's staying. Um, but yeah, interested to see the next steps that he takes. Let me know your thoughts on it all in the comments below. Are you like me? How happy do you feel? Do you think he can go on and make the grade in the uh, first team? Say say this summer, if you sell it, if Arsenal do sell Emil Smith Rowe, that's a position. Although Emil's not played that much this season it's still a key position in the squad and a key player in the squad to have in terms of your strength and depth so would you replace smith row or would you just would you sell smith row and then leave that spot in the squad open basically for ethan to take the step up and fill smith row's position in the squad let me know your thoughts in the comments below right moving on to sunday's game massive game isn't it just a little bit big a little bit big um declan rice has been speaking ahead of it uh, interesting from him, I thought. He says, we have to go to the Etihad, which is going to be really tough. But if you want to get the best, if you, sorry, if you want to get past that barrier of Arsenal being labelled stuff, you have to go there and win. We have to show that stillness and character to prove we can be one of the best teams. There's no doubt that City are the best team in the world at the minute, but we have full confidence and belief as a group and the manager that we can go and get a result. He was, he was asked, what it, the response that response came from, you know, Arsenal were kind of labelled as bottle jobs at the end of last season when they let the title slip away. 
and they went up to the Etihad and got battered 4-1. Um, so that's how he responded. So and if you want to get past that barrier of being labelled, that sort of thing, you have to go there and win. And I think he's probably right. I don't think Arsenal bottled the league last season. I just think ultimately they weren't good enough and they ran out of steam and injuries, injuries hit them too hard and the juggernaut that was Manchester City eventually overtook them. What Arsenal did last season was fantastic. It was superb and they deserved a lot of credit for it. They just weren't quite ready to get themselves over the line. I do think this team is ready to get themselves over the line. I don't, that doesn't mean that they're going to do it because it's going to be incredibly hard. They've got the hardest run in by distance. I think they're, they're third favourites for the title and understandably when you look at the fixture list that that is the case. So it's going to be really difficult but I do believe this team can do it. They, they can go to the Etihad and win and when Declan Rice says there that we have to be full of confidence, sorry, we have full confidence and belief as a group and the manager that we can get a result. I genuinely believe him. I think this team believe they can go to the Etihad and win. I'm not sure there's been an Arsenal team in the last few years who have believed that before. But this, they know they can beat City. They've done it twice this season. It's a different job altogether to go to the Etihad and beat City, but I honestly think they can beat him. Uh, and I think that man right there is going to be really, really key to that. Team news-wise, Manchester City held an open training session yesterday. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see pictures there of Jack Grealish is back from his injury. He was training. Kevin De Bruyne is back from the injury that ruled him out. <laughs> the injury that ruled him out of Belgium's games over the international break. He was training. So those players are clearly going to be fit. Kanji was there as well. Uh, obviously, there was doubts <clears throat> over Kanji because he dropped out of the Switzerland game against Republic of Ireland. So it looks like Kanji will be fit. There was no Stones, though, and there was no Walker. So those two players who got injured while playing for England on international duty, Walker against Brazil and Stones against Belgium, they weren't involved in that training session. Like I said earlier, Pep Guardiola is going to be speaking today ahead of that match, whether he does what Arteta does and just plays a very flat bat and doesn't give anything away on the fitness of those two players. We'll have to wait and see. But um, we know certainly from this training session that City are going to have Grealish, they're going to have De Bruyne, they're going to have a Kanji, but we'll have to wait and see on Stones and Walker. Well, moving on to some of your questions and comments. Martin here says, hello, Charles. Love the content. Thank you very much. As the game nears closer, I am so excited, stroke nervous. Pep openly admitted he got the spaces wrong in the first game at the Emirates. And I can't help wonder how Arteta will look to hurt City this time. This time around, Ben White is inverting from the right. And I just think with Rice sitting deeper and Jorginho further up with his vision, carving up the City defence, we have a great shot, not to mention Havertz is in form. Seems like we are a totally different team from the last matchup. And I hope Arteta can get the pep better of Pep yet again. Come on, you gunners. Yeah, interesting. The thought of Rice sitting deep and Jorginho playing higher up, like we saw against Liverpool, that worked well. I do feel that might be the way he goes. The closer I'm getting to the game, the more I'm thinking about it. I think that might be the way he goes. It might be that they operate as a pair, but Jorginho slightly more advanced as a pair. I think Rice will be the holder. I'd be very surprised if we get to the Etihad and Jorginho is the is the holder, is a straight up number six on his own in front of the back four. I just think he's going to deploy Rice in that role for this game like he did against Liverpool. And it worked very well there. And Jorginho played very well playing in the more advanced role. I think that might be the case. It'll either be the two of them together or Jorginho slightly further ahead. That's how I'm seeing it. Um, but yeah, also I think Arsenal are a different team. So when they beat them, that they when they beat them earlier in the season, you know, that was a tight game. Arsenal were without Saka that day. They're out Martinelli as well. He came on as a substitute. They had Jesus out wide. You know, it's a pretty patched up team as well. City obviously had no De Bruyne and Rodri, so they were a different team. Um, and it was a really tight game. But I don't think either team were anywhere near their best on that day. It was a really absorbing game to be at. I think this game's going to be different. I do. And I think both teams are obviously in better shape. Arsenal in great momentum behind them and they're full of belief. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. I'm nervous, definitely nervous, but I am really looking forward to it as well. And Nostradamus 86 has got in touch here. He says, Charles, if you could choose one of the three players that would step up their game, being in consistent form while being given actual game time, who would it be? Nelson, Nketiah or Vieira? I thought this was an interesting one. It certainly got me thinking when I was reading it earlier on. And I think, I think it would be Eddie. I think because you want, you know, I, I would love Eddie to have just made a big, big breakthrough and ended up scoring, you know, 15 goals in a season, something like that, because you just want strikers to come through from the county. It saves you so much money. It saves you so much issues of looking around and taking a chance and spending huge money on bringing a striker in, you know, and it would have been great. You know, Eddie looked like that goal poacher who could score loads and loads of goals. It just hasn't quite happened for him. And he has been given the opportunities. You can't say that. Arteta gave him loads of opportunities. 
this season earlier on and last season before eventually taking them back out the side. Um, so yeah, I think out of all of them, I just I would it would I'd have loved it to be Eddie. Look, I'd loved all of them to do it, and we'll wait and see on Vieira. I still think Vieira is a really talented footballer, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if he takes his game to a new level next season as well with him. You know, I'm not ready to 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 sort of wipe Vieira out of the equation in terms of Arsenal going forward. But um, yeah, I think probably Eddie. I have to say, just because it's that thing of a striker coming through from your youth team and scoring loads of goals, it would just be fantastic to see, and it would have saved the club a hell of a lot of money. Uh, Matt here and Stunner of a Gunner have got in touch about the midfield situation we were talking about yesterday in terms of what you do with Party, Jorginho, El Nenny, me saying I want Jorginho to sign a new contract. Matt says, I think on the midfield situation, yes, definitely want to keep Jorginho, sell Party, release El Nenny. El Nenny has played 96 minutes all season. I know he's a great pro, but he's a non factor given the squad has moved on. Party has played the equivalent of three full games plus Community Shield. That's it. Fingers crossed for the end of the season, of course, but he's 30 on big wages. Agree with your analysis that. Uh, stroke absent Saudi interest there's unlikely to be a market for him my question on Jorginho's option is why not just trigger the extra year is it purely a question of respect or do we example owe Chelsea more money if he stays the extra year I don't know the ins and out of that option but all I can say is as far as I, I know that's not actually an option right now that's Arsenal are, are looking to if they do get Jorginho to stay it's going to be a fresh new contract it's not going to be that option um, I'm, I don't know the ins and outs of exactly why. I just know that if he does stay, it's going to be a new contract. Uh, Stunner of a Gunner says, whilst Party was, in my opinion, the best CDM in the league for two thirds of last season uh, when he was fit and playing, the fact on paper Rice and Party could be an epic partnership. Considering Party's age and injury problems, I think we should keep Jorginho like we have El Nenny. His experience and mentality is more valuable than the money it would take to replace Party with a less talented younger prodigy for the long term I also feel he's an excellent squad player and could maybe make a great coach one day the issue with that is that look, George, un, you know, unlike El Nenny El Nenny's been perfectly happy to sit around and basically not play he just loves being at Arsenal he was happy to be that squad player who if needed would come on and play and be that model professional I don't think Jorginho's in that situation Jorginho will have lots of interest from lots of clubs we spoke about Barcelona yesterday I don't think he's just going to stick around and kick his heels and basically play the odd minute here and there like El Nenny is happy to do. So I'm not sure that's really an option for Jorginho. I think if he stays and signs a new contract, he needs to know that he's going to be an important player still and get a lot of minutes, unlike El Nenny. So I think it's a little bit different uh, when sort of comparing the two uh, of those two players. Uh, Eddie's playlist 4964 says Ben has been completely professional through this and kept his mouth shut. This is Ben White he's talking about with England. What happens in the squad stays in the squad. Southgate could easily have said no comment or there's a personal issue and left it at that instead of trying to glor glorify himself as a doors always open good guy manager. Utter bollocks. Take responsibility for your coaching staff and sort it out behind closed doors. If I was Ben, there's no way... I'd play under Southgate. I have to say you've nailed it there, Eddie. That's exactly my feelings on it. Um, and I think you're right. I don't think there's really too much more I can say on it. I just think you're absolutely spot on with it. I think Southgate could have handled it miles better. I understand that he needed to say something because he was getting so many questions about why is Ben White not in the squad. So he needed to kind of say something, but he could have. It's He certainly left up Ben White open to so much criticism now. Um, and I just don't think Ben's going to, tell his own story I had another comment from someone uh, saying why doesn't Ben just tell his own story now put it all out in the open but I just don't think he's really that kind of guy yet to do that I think he, and I don't think he'd be overly bothered but um, but yeah I, if I, I can't see there's a way that Ben White comes back into the England fold under Southgate and Steve Holland I think he I wouldn't surprise me if he plays for England again but I think it'll be when a new coaching staff have come in and who knows that could be after the summer and that's it from me, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. As always, really do appreciate it. Have a fantastic start to your bank holiday weekend if you're watching over here in the UK or just have a fantastic start to your weekend if you're watching anywhere else in the world. I'll be back tomorrow reacting to Mikel Arteta's press conference, of course, looking ahead to that big, big game on Sunday. Until then, everyone, have a good day. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.